Okay, good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today, guys? Welcome back to Mr. Morals Honors Geology class. Today we're going to wrap up Chapter 9, and we're going to talk about uh, trig uh, functions a little bit more. We're also going to talk about solving a right triangle using trig. And really important, we're going to talk about angles of elevation and depression. So when we're talking about the trig functions, okay, we've just talked about the basic three. Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent. Just so you know, later on, so you don't think I lied to you, there are three more. The reciprocals of those functions. So the reciprocal of sine is called the cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is called the secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is called the cotangent. That's neither here nor there. I just wanted to explain that to you. Now I'm going to show you what the 30, 60, 90 triangle and the 45, 45, 90 triangle looks like in what's called a unit circle. A unit circle is the circle from which all trigonometry is really derived. The basis of, of, of trigonometry, sorry, tongue twister there, is derived from the unit circle. And it is literally a circle that has a radius of one. That's literally what a unit circle is. So know that you're going to have to memorize the unit circle in real trig next year. Um, but what I'm going to show you are the basic values from which the whole entire unit circle revolves around. If you remember these trig values that I'm going to show you, you're really going to be set. Because all of these trig values are either going to be the ones that you're looking for or what's called a reference angle for what you're looking for. We're not going to get into reference angles right now, but just trust me. If you remember these, you're going to be golden. So when we're looking at the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90, in the unit circle, these are the following values. Since the radius is 1, side across the 45 is 1. There, there's a isosceles, so they're both one. And of course, since a 45, 45, 90, the hypotenuse is the, the side times square root of 2. It's just square root of 2. For a 30, 60, 90, the side across the 30 is 1. The side across the 60 is 1 times square root of 3, which is square root of 3. And the hypotenuse is 1 times 2, which is 2. From here, we can derive the following table that's right below it, okay? From here, I can derive everything I want, except for the zero. The zero, you're just going to have to memorize. But you will not technically have to memorize the 30 and the 60 and the 45. The, the zero and the 90, you will. But the 30 and the 45 and the 60, you can literally take from this triangle. So if you forget these values, just remember to use your 30, 60, 90 triangle and 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay? So, the sine of 0 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. And the tangent is also 0. Sine of 30 is 1 half. How did I get that, though, Mr. Morrow? I'm not going to bore you with how I got all of these, but just so you know, if you forget that, draw your 30, 60, 90 triangle in the unit circle. What's the sine of 30? Opposite over hypotenuse, 1 half. And that's how I'm deriving all of these values, guys. The cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of 30 is square root of 3 over 3. 45, since it's an isosceles triangle, both the sine and the cosine of 45 are both square root of 2 over square root of 2. So that's a good help. The tangent of 45 degrees is square root of 3. I, I'm sorry. That's, the, that's for 60. Is 1. Sorry. A tangent of 45 degrees is 1. My bad. The sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half. The tangent of 60 is 
square root of 3. And for 90, the sine of 90 is 1. The cosine of 90 is 0. And the tangent of 90 is what's called undefined. So, the more you use this table, the more you will remember it. But if you don't remember it, please at least remember the 30, 60, 90 triangle and the unit circle. And then you can find all of these. Okay? Please. I beg you. All right? So, this is something really important for you to memorize. Now, there's nothing much else to learn today, okay? We already learned what the trig functions were yesterday. So today we're just going to work out problems, one after the other. You can use your calculator if you so choose. It's up to you. Excuse me for one second, please. All right. So I want to find X here, guys. Get into the habit of immediately trying to find out what trig function can be activated here. What trig function am I working with? And the best way to do that, in my opinion, until you got this down pat, is to label your sides. The side across this 30 is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse, of course, because it's across the 90. And the side immediately next to this angle is the adjacent. So I'm dealing with the adjacent and the hop and the hypotenuse. Who deals with the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Think of so ka toa. Who deals with the uh, adjacent and hypotenuse? Ka cosine. So the cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 8. Literally that easy. So now solve for, for x. Now it's just basic algebra. Multiply it to both sides. Calculator time. 8 times the cosine of 30. Remember, when you plug in the cosine of 30, you're taking a value. Bless you. So the value of the cosine of 30 times 8 equals 6.93. Make sure your calculator is on degrees, guys. Eight times the cosine of thirty, guys. Okay, give me one second. We're having. Hold on, give me one second. Okay, guys. Now, I see the problem. Some of your calculators are giving you the value of x equals four square root of three. Okay, that is beautiful. However, I need you to learn how to convert that into an actual value. Because when we're dealing with trigonometry, we're dealing with usually real-life situations. And I'll show you a couple now, hopefully. We'll have time for that. And if you're out on the field as an engineer, having the value 4 square root of 3 doesn't really help that engineer. But having the value four point, uh, 6 point nine three that helps the engineer. So we need the actual value here, please. And thank you. Okay? So look at it all. we got nothing but examples today. Okay, in this particular case, is solve triangle X, Y, Z. When they want you to solve a triangle, they want you to find all of the missing values. So the first thing I'm going to do is, since I have a 90 and a 35, angle Y here is 55 degrees. That should have been easy. 180 minus 90 minus 35. And look at my instructions. Round the measures of the side to the nearest tenths. So I'm first going to solve for x. But when I'm looking at, at x, I'm going to deal with angle 35. From the 35, that's my opposite. 10 is the hypotenuse. And y is my adjacent. So I want to solve for x. What trigonometric function am I dealing with if I'm dealing with the opposite and hypotenuse in this case? Sine, very good. So the sine of 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Go ahead and multiply 10 to both sides, gentlemen. And you're going to get 10 times the sine of 35 equals 5.7. Because I said round to the nearest tenths. 
we'll do Y in red. I'm going to stick with 35. I like to stick, if possible, with what I was originally given because I could have made an error. And let's say 55 was really a wrong value. Now I get everything wrong. Okay? So now, if I'm dealing with 35 again, but I'm solving for Y, what trigonometric function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So the cosine of 35 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply by 10. Y will equal 10 times the cosine of 35, which is 8.19. But rounded to the nearest tenths is 8.2. And now I have solved my right triangle. Okay? Does that make sense, gentlemen? Sir? Yes, 35 is my theta, the angle in question this time. Yes, that's what I chose. I could have chosen 55, and it would have been the same exact answers, just a little bit of a different setup. But I don't like to use the angle that I calculated because what if I wrote it down wrong? What if I made a mistake? Not only do I get that wrong now, but the whole entire triangle wrong. Thank you, my brother. May I continue, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Now, a theodolite, okay? It's also called a transit. I wanted to show you what this was because I'm sure you've seen uh, what's called a surveyor on a street or on, on land, on a property, um, in front of a river, uh, lakes. You see surveyors on the streets, okay, and they have this tripod-looking thing. This is called a transit or a theodolite, okay? Probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but oh well. It is an optical instrument consisting of small mounted telescope. The telescope is right here, okay, which is rotatable in horizontal and vertical planes, and it's used to measure angles in surveying. What this bad boy does is it creates horizontal and vertical lines and can calculate angles. Okay, From those calculated angles, you can apply trigonometry. That's what a surveyor or a civil engineer does or a structural engineer. And then they can find the heights and the distances and the widths of things that normally you couldn't figure out. For example, this bridge here. Okay, This bridge... Went from here, across the river, to here. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. How do you think they could have measured that distance? Do you think a guy jumped into the water with a measuring tape and just swam? No, it wouldn't work. You may think, no, Mr. Moore, not swimming, but you could have gone on a boat. That won't work either. Because when you go on a boat, if you've ever been on a boat, you go up and down. So that up and down is also calculating the distance. So that distance is going to be wrong. Okay? If, the, if the, the water was completely flat and a boat didn't have any vertical jump to it when it was traveling, then maybe. But here you're going to have to use trigonometry. So after a beautiful picture like this, of course you're probably going to laugh at my Mickey Mouse picture, but... Let's go ahead and say that in order to construct a bridge across a river, the width of the river at the locations must be determined. I've got to find the width of this river, guys. Okay? Now, suppose that a stake is planted at one side of the river directly across from a second stake. So let's say uh, here are my stakes. Okay? At a distance of 50, mile, 50 meters to the left of the stake, an angle of 82 degrees is measured between the two stakes. Right here, guys, this is where I would put my transit. That's where the surveyor would be. Why? Because I can measure a horizontal distance on land with a measuring tape. It's actually not a measuring tape. It's a wheel that they use. I don't know if you've ever seen anyone um, uh, evaluate the, the price of a home. It's called uh, an appraiser. And they'll walk 
and it's a wheel and it calculates using the circumference of the circle geometry the distance yes sir they can do that when they're measuring a soccer field as well or a, or a football field yes sir yes sir the the origin of trigonometry is triangle geometry okay so so the transit guys would be right here so this transit can create this angle here of 82 degrees so now now come on guys settle down that was a pretty crazy question but okay now what you can do is you can use trigonometry to find the width who am I going to use here which one uses the opposite side and the adjacent Toa tangent very good so the surveyor or the engineer is going to say okay the tangent of 82 degrees that my instrument my transit calculated equals opposite over adjacent multiply 50 to both sides and 50 times the tangent of 82 equals exactly my brother W will equal 355.7684861 they'll probably round this probably something so technical like this probably they'll round it to the ten thousands so they go 355.7685 feet okay remember guys this isn't when they're dealing with real life things it's not Mickey Mouse they can't be off by a decimal that's lives that could be lost so this is the beauty of trigonometry that's why I love trigonometry I love geometry but trigonometry has a lot of awesome uses okay and yes the origin is triangle geometry yes sir yes sir <laughs> okay sorry about that all right guys now angle of elevation and angle of depression very important I'm gonna be a little bit foolish right now you're gonna think I'm a dork but that's okay guys angle of elevation think about it like this baseline this blue line here that's when you're standing straight if you put your hand just right in front of you that's my baseline now from there look guys put both hands here if I look up doesn't it go up all right doesn't it go up exactly thank you for laughing at me I appreciate that that is the line of sight okay now if I'm looking down at something that's my angle of depression right here okay it I know you guys laugh at me but it makes sense baseline is here line of angle of elevation the angles right there angle of depression the angles right there now you may giggle now guys but when we're taking a quiz and test on this I will be the one who is giggling now I want you to pay attention if you're at the top of this light tower okay the baseline is right here if someone at the top of that tower looks down at this boat that's my angle of depression guys if the person is on the boat this is my baseline of the boat if that person looks up to the tower that is my angle of elevation please be cognizant of the fact that there is a baseline and you have to obey that baseline and then make your angle of elevation or depression from there yes sir I am so proud of you yes in fact that's how we're gonna solve a lot of it what he noticed is 
Mr. Moore, if I have a horizontal baseline and a horizontal baseline here, don't I create that C you were talking about? So aren't the angle of elevation and depression congruent because of alternate interior angles? Yes. And we're going to use that skill uh, to, to solve a lot of these things. I'm very proud of you, son. Well done. Okay. So how does this work? The aerial run in Snowbird, Utah has an angle of elevation of 20.2 degrees. The vertical, its vertical drop is 2,900 feet. Estimate the length of the run. Okay, so here's the mountain, which has an elevation, a straight vertical drop of 2,900 feet. Okay? You're somewhere over here. Okay? Your baseline is the ground. When you look up, though, that's my angle of elevation, which is 20.2 degrees. So I want to find out what is the length of the run. The length of the run is the actual slope here. So in this particular case, what sign for, ah, I messed up. What trig function will you use? Sign, yeah, I messed up. Opposite over hypotenuse. Let's pause here for one second. Okay, sorry about that. A few interruptions today. All right, so we are now going to figure this out using sine. So I have the sine of 20.2 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now, please, please be aware of this one. You're going to have to use algebra. Multiply x to both sides. So I've got x times the sine of 20.2 equals 2,900. i got to solve for x, though. So I'm going to divide by the sine of 20.2. Okay? So x will equal 2,900 divided. Ah, That's the sine. Divided by the sine of 20.2. And that will equal 8,300. 98.5 feet. That's a pretty good run on on a, a ski slope. That's a little, not a little, about it's almost a mile and a half. And that place does exist. It's a really cool, cool run. All right? Now, okay. The angle of depression from the top of the castle to to a boat is 25 degrees. If the boat is 150 feet from the base of the castle, how tall is the castle? Okay, so I have this castle. Yeah, I know. My drawings are awesome. All right, so I have this castle here, okay? And the angle of depression, here's where it gets important. The angle of depression, guys, please pay attention to this. This is my baseline, okay? My angle of depression comes down like this. This is my angle of depression. That's 25 degrees. So you have two choices here. You can make a little box here. If this is 90 and my angle of depression is 25, what would this angle be here? 65 degrees. Correct? You with me there, guys? You feel me? Or... We could use what my boy said. If I make a Z here, since those are congruent because of alternate interior angles, wouldn't this be 25? So either skill can be used. So here's my boat, and this is a really awesome drawing. Look at that. What? I, I should be in a museum. All right. I want to know what is the distance... Um, I'm sorry, the height of the castle. The boat is 150 feet away from the castle, so I want to know what is my height x. Well, I could do one of two things. I can use the angle 65 or the angle 25. What do you guys want to use? Because I don't care. 25, okay. Who am I going to use? Who's activated here? Tangent. So the tangent of 25 equals opposite over adjacent, multiply the 150 to both sides, 
So 150 times the tangent of 25 will equal 69.9 feet, basically 70 feet tall. And guess what, guys? Believe it or not, this is how back in the ancient times of fighting, they would actually calculate how tall a castle was so they could throw, you know, fireballs or um, uh, catapults. Catapults work on trigonometry. So these are very awesome things that have been used for many, many years. Now, does that make sense? Because the homework is heavy on this. All right. Okay. We've got these four questions. We will work on these until we're done, okay? And then that's it. If we can't get to it all, I strongly suggest that you do it. Okay. Let's solve this triangle here. This is beta, by the way. This is alpha. What's my angle alpha going to be? Come on, guys. 34, yeah, guys. 180 minus 90 minus 56 is 34. Okay, I've got my hypotenuse. Well, let's work from let's work from beta. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent, and this is my opposite. Let's find a. What trig function can I use to find a? What was I given, guys? I was only given a hypotenuse here, right? Sine. Very good. So the sine of 56 equals opposite, which is my A, over hypotenuse. So 15 times the sine of 56 would equal 12.4. Let's leave it at the tenths. Okay. What trig function would I use to solve B coming from angle 56, angle beta? You could use tangent, but remember what I told you. You don't want to use values that you've already found because you could have messed up. So let's use cosine. Cosine of 56 equals adjacent, which is B, over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 56 times 15 equals 8.38, so 8.4. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Promise? Okay, the bell's about to ring. I know you're getting antsy. Practice this, please. And just real quick, before you leave, I won't do the math, but I will set this up for you. The flagpole that a golfer aims at on a green measures five feet from the ground. So you have this flag, and it's five feet tall, okay? Um, from, from the ground to the top of the flag. And a golfer measures a three-degree angle from the top of the pole to the ground. So my baseline is here. This is a three-degree angle of depression. So the real angle that we're working with, we're making this triangle here, is 87. Very good. And then they want to find, here's the golfer. He wants to find how far he is from there. So this would be the opposite over uh, adjacent. It would be the tangent of 87 equals opposite over adjacent. And you can calculate from there. Be careful with those angles of elevation and depression. Thank you. Hope you learned a lot. Have a great day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.